Thank you for tuning in to our video tutorial. My name is Aline Jean and I'm a respiratory therapy student at Miami Dade College Medical Campus. Today our topic is going to be on bronchohygiene therapy. The special way we're going to do this is using PAP. PAP stands for positive airway pressure. Okay. The device that we're going to go on ahead and use is called the Easy Pap, in which we're going to go over and talk about a little bit more later on. But first, let's cover some more important topics. The respiratory therapist should know that this indication for this therapy is great in patients with cystic fibrosis or chronic bronchitis who have a problem mobilizing their retained secretions, as well as patients who have asthma or COPD who has air trapping. This therapy is also great in preventing and or reversing to treat atelectasis. Okay? The respiratory therapist should be very careful because there are certain signs that the patient will show telling the respiratory therapist that this procedure is not appropriate at all. His contraindications are an increased intracranial pressure of 20 millimeters of mercury or greater, an untreated pneumothorax, or if they just had a surgery on their face, mouth, head, skull, and if they have an active hemoptysis. You don't want to go on ahead and get this uh, therapy. The therapist should also be careful because there are certain hazards and complications that may be present while giving this therapy, such as a, um, a cardiac, cardiopulmonary complications. Okay, there may be some cardiovascular complications. There may be some pulmonary barotrauma. Okay, so you want to be very, very, very careful. Or your patient may just be claustrophobic. So if any of these things are present, you want to stop your therapy and, and then make sure that you can proceed on when it's safe to do so. So right now, we're going to go on ahead and um, we're going to go on ahead and start the therapy, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that I assess, I verify my physician's order. Then I'm going to make sure that um, I don my, wash my hands, okay? And I'm going to make sure that I don wash my hands for about 15 seconds and don my appropriate PPE, which will be in this case. Right. Okay, so I did that. I'm gonna make sure that my patient sits up and I'm going to take my patient's breath sounds and vital signs, indicating that this patient actually needs this therapy, okay? so. Now I'm going to assemble my equipment. So, you're going to need your oxygen tubing, okay? You're going to also need a, um, a oxygen source, okay? Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that my flow is set at 5 liters per minute. So now, this is my easy pack, this is my mouthpiece, okay, this is my pressure manometer, and this is my nose clip. Take a wild guess of why I might need this nose clip. You got it? Because I'm not using a mask, I want to be, and I'm using a mouthpiece, I want to make sure that there are no leaks, absolutely no leaks, okay? So, I set my pressure manometer at about 10 centimeters of water pressure, okay? And like I said before, my oxygen source is set at five liters per minute. So I'm just gonna quickly ask you to hold this for me, okay? Now, so my patient is sit upright. Notice that she's comfortable, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so <clears throat> the first thing I'm gonna make sure that my patient do, my patient is going to inhale, okay? They're going to make sure that they use their diaphragm. However, they're not going to take a total lung capacity in inhalation, but it will be a very strong inhalation using their diaphragm. Then she's going to exhale. While she's exhaling, I'm gonna make sure that I monitor the pressure manometer, okay? And I'm gonna make sure that her exhalation times is three times more than her inhalation time, okay? After that, then I'm gonna definitely make sure that um, her, she, you know, she does about 10 to 20 breaths, okay? And then she's gonna take three huff coughs. After she takes the three huff coughs, I'm gonna make sure that she does this procedure about four to eight times within a 10 to 20 minute time frame period, okay? Great, so we're gonna get started, are you ready? Oh, she doesn't look too ready. It's okay, she's sick. All right, so we're gonna make sure that we cover her, her nose, okay? 
You comfortable? Okay, perfect. All right, and I want you to inhale using your diaphragm. Take a big, deep inhalation. All right, and now I want you to push, 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 push. Notice how I'm coaching my patient. It's very important. I'm checking my manometer. Push, push, push. There we go. Okay, she's going to repeat this process. I want to make sure she does about 10 to 20 breaths, okay? So we're going to pretend like we just did 10 to 20 breaths, okay? After each sentence, after after that, I'm gonna make sure that she she takes a huff cough. So I wanna do, I want you to do three huff coughs for me, okay? <coughs> there you go, very very strong, okay? So that huff cough, I wanna make sure that I clear out all those secretions, okay? That's very 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 important. My pressure manometer was set at 10 centimeters of water pressure. Notice how when she was exhaling, that there was a red ring in the middle and it increased. That lets us know how many centimeters of water pressure she's pushing against when she's exhaling. Okay, that's very important. Now, there are four things that the respiratory therapist must evaluate in this butyl. Can you take a wild guess? There you go. Okay, so the first thing, you want to make sure that you evaluate the odor. You want to make sure that you evaluate the actual amount. You want to make sure you evaluate the thickness. And you also want to make sure that you evaluate the color, okay? All four of these things are very important and essential because they let us know as respiratory therapists what's going on with our patients. It's the patient's body trying to communicate with us, okay? Great. So we're going to go on ahead. So now that that's done, okay, just go on ahead and turn off my... Great. All right. So now I'm going to go on ahead and make sure that I re I documented what I just took for my um for my sputum collection. Okay, I record that. Then I'm gonna also make sure that I reevaluate her vital signs and breath sounds. It's very very important. I want to make sure that the reason why I actually gave it to her actually you know improve. Okay, so I want to make sure I hear some improvements in her vital signs and breath sounds. Okay. So, all right, we're going to um just check that out. Okay. So I check her vital signs and I check her breath signs. Everything seems good. Okay. So is there anything else that I can do today to ensure your comfortability? My patient says no. Great. So the respiratory therapist would then make sure that they remove their uh, PPE appropriately and rewash their hands. I would say for about 15 seconds just to be on the safe side. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot about bronchial hygiene therapy. I hope that uh, you got a great understanding about it. We've went over the objectives. We spoke about the patients who qualify for it. We spoke about uh, patients who do not qualify for it, okay? And we spoke about what's very important to monitor while giving this um, therapy. So I hope you enjoyed it. Again, my name is Aline Jean. I'm a respiratory therapy student at Miami-Dade College Medical Campus. Bye. Hope to see you soon.